forget to like, subscribe, comment, and click the notification button. Hi everyone! I am Dr. Larissa Gata, a sociologist, forester, and educator. In this video, I would like to share with you the class presentation of SFFG 152, Sociology of Natural Resources, Section T. This is a class presentation, a student activity being conducted in SFFG 152 every semester. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the activity responses have been modified to suit the virtual learning setup. Activity responses, or more popularly known as AR, refer to individual and group output-based tasks, which I have personally designed for each topic included in the course content of SFFG 152. In this video, the students present their group outputs for AR 5 to 8 for the first time in the online platform. If you have any inquiries and comments, kindly use the comment section and the students will be more than willing to respond to them to the best of their abilities. Good day everyone. We are about to hold our final presentation for SFFG 152 Section 2. And uh, before that, let us call on Ms. Alforha for the prayer. Um, let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help as we are gathered together. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that we, will, that we would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that we would challenge each other to reach higher and far farther to be the best we can be. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Alcorha, for the prayer. And now let us call on Mr. Barameda for our national anthem. May we all rise for the singing of the Philippine national anthem. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Thank you, Mr. Barameda. And now, let us proceed with our video presentations for activity response number five. Let us call on group one. Good day, everyone. We are the group one, and our topic is all about the stakeholder analysis. For the introduction, a community is a social unit with commonality, such as norms, religions, values, customs, or identity. Communities may share a sense of place situated in a given geographical area, durable relations that extend beyond immediate genealogical ties also define a sense of community, important to their identity, practice, and roles in social institutions. So for the location map, this is the location map of Bayo Bontok Mautic Province. Bayo is barangay in the municipality of Bontok and Mautic Province. Its population, as determined by the 2015 consensus, census was 350. This represented 1.42% of the total population of Bontok. Bayo is situated in the island of Luzon. 
elevation at its coordinates is estimated at 1,513.3 meters or 4,964.8 feet above mean sea level. For the methodology, for this study, the group has been limited to the collection of data and other resources. For stakeholder analysis because of the country's experience and situation due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The group researched for a journal article about the problems or issues within the specific com community. The group discussed the journal article that we picked through a group chat messenger. The discussion revolves in identifying the local stakeholders and activities in the Bayo Bangkok Mountain province. The collected information and data from the journal article were tabulated according to the prescribed templates. The stakeholders were then ranked according to their importance in natural resource governance and management. Ten key stakeholders were selected as the most vital ones in the context of Bayo Bontoc Mountain Province. These are the 30 identified stakeholders. Number one is the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DNR, Local Government Units, or the LGU, National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, NCIP, uh, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DNR, the Forest Management Bureau, Environmental Management Bureau, Local Government Unit, Non-Government Organization, National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, Non-Profit Organization, Rangay Chairman, Rangay Members, Sangguni ng Kabataan, the Elders, the Migrants, Governments, Civil Servants, Companies, Religious Groups, uh, Women's Group, Environmental Group, Conservation Group, Media Organization, Enterprises, Civic Organization, Corporation, Farmers, Traders, and Entrepreneurs. The indigenous communities help protect the environment, fight climate change, and build resilience towards natural disasters. They believe that the natural resource is sacred and it needs to be whole for future generations. They have also been protecting most of our most of our remaining biodiversity. However, despite these contributions, their rights are still always at risk. And uh, for the National Commission on Indigenous People, Protection and Protection of Indigenous People, and its power is increasing the promotion of rights and well-being of IEs. For its um, um, negative impact, uh, positive impact, it is good for mobilizing the community and make the work likely. And for its neg uh, negative impact, it's a weak policy implementation. And its impact is, um, it is a good help for mobilizing the community overall. For farmers, the role of farmers is that they help in, impl in planting trees, management, and monitoring. For the positive impact, source of additional budget for NRN. For the negative impact, it depletes the environment and resources. Um, the power give uh, power gives the farmers independence to ensure that they can work on their own even without the help of the government, so that their income is without dependent dependency. For the local government unit. It provides an organized system that good that gives good governance that suits the culture and their locality. Next is the role of NRM. They they help the higher authorities implement plans and helps in engaging the constituent. The the, the positive activities of LGU is the source of management plans, budget, and manpower of for implementation. The negative activities is that corruption weak policy implementation. Lastly, source of management plans, budget, and manpower for implementation. Number five is the non-government organizations. Non-government organizations or NGOs have aided in the development of society and or increased community involvement. Local people will be involved in projects and strategies for sustainable development in Biomontok Mountain Province as a result of this. Finally, it serves as an intermediate between the government and the general public. Number six is the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Their role is they spearhead the planning and implementation altogether with other stakeholders. Their positive impact activities is source of management plans, budget, and manpower of implementation. And its negative impact activities is the corruption with policy implementation. Their influence is to ensure the proper use of the country's natural resources and protection of the environment within the framework of the sustainable development. And its power is creating rules and regulation in protection of the natural resources. Number seven is Forest Management Bureau. 
um, the role of FMB is they spearhead the plotting and implementation altogether with other stakeholders. Their power is providing effective support in programs regarding the conservation of forest land and watershed. For the positive activities is source of source of management plans, budget and manpower for implementation. And for the negative activities is corruption and weak policy implementation. For the impact, um, the influence is more uh, sustainable for environment. The eighth stakeholder is the Environment Management Bureau. It plays a role when it comes to the protection of the environment, thus helping with the conservation of natural resources within the community. They are the ones responsible for formulating the plans, programs, and the creation of the appropriate environmental quality standards for the protection of the environment. With them being responsible for the form formulation of plans, they are responsible for the proper for its proper in implementation. Thus, their negative activities would be the misimplementation of their plans and not using it correctly. The Environment Management Bureau would always impact how the environment would be protected in the community. Next is social organization, where it provides a group that gives our sense of belonging, helps engaging the involved community, mobilizing community, makes people rely on public institution and mob mobilizing the community. And the last one are civil servants. Uh, they play a big role when mobilizing the community and ensuring that there is law and order in the place. They are the ones responsible for implementing policies and, rule and laws, rules, and regulation within the area. Their power comes from the fact that they are assigned by the government, making them a considerable part of managing a place. They ensure that people would abide by the law and would enforce law and order within an area which makes it safe for the community to live in. This increases the quality of life of the people within the community and could empower them to be participative in the community once they know they are safe when participating. Civil servants truly play a big role but they are prone to corruption once they are blinded by what they can be corrupt about. This corruption would then benefit the people on the wealthy side of the community and would affect that those that don't involve themselves with corruption. When a community grows through time, their power must, be, must increase to ensure that there won't be looming threats in the area's peace and order when it grows. And that's civil servants. And that ends our presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much for group one. And now let us call on group number two. One, today we will going to present our activity response, which is based on the study entitled Determination of Carrying Capacity Estimates of Ecotourism Attractions in Quezon Protected Landscape, the Philippines. The article is about carrying capacity estimates of the tourist attraction in Quezon Protected Landscape. Such of these sites were Malabayabas Forest, Pinagbanderahan Peak, and Pinagben Pinagbanderahan Trail. This study aims to collect and study the carrying capacity estimates of the said sites considering the physical, biological, ecological, and social factors. Possibly, there is still a risk for overcrowding and digestion of the area during its peak season. Hence, the result of this study would be used as an input for the improvement of visitor management in Quezon Protected Landscape. Um, the identified stakeholders are Protected Area Management Board, PAMB. Its interest is to provide recommendations on securing QPL, which will be approved by the DNR. Its power is overall in charge of the management, allocation, and protection of Quezon Protected Landscape. Second is the local academic institution, which interest is to serve as, as an educational laboratory for local academic institution. Um, its power is to have an access to Quezon Protected Landscape and its resources for academic and research purposes. The third one is local communities, which interest is to provide an economic livelihood for the local communities as well as their everyday necessities. And um, its power is to have permission on 
common access to the protected areas resources in their everyday lives. Um, local communities are seen as partners in the tourists, which in tourists is um, seen in seen an increasing trend by approximately 48 percent from 2014 to 2018 with 4,833 and 7,160 total visitors respectively. Um, its power is to promote QPL influence other to protect and conserve the environment. The fifth one is the local government unit, um, <clears throat> which interest is to have a strong influence in conserving the resources that meet the needs of tourists. And its power is to provide peace and order, effective local governments, and other public services for the community and the environment, including the provision of income, generating opportunities for the people. The next one is Department of Tourism. Its interest is tourist visitations contribute to a large portion of the Philippine econ economy. Its power is close coordination with PAMB and LGUs should be maintained as tourist rates rise. The next one is Department of Justice. Its interest is enforcing the law as QPL is part of the APA. Its power is maintenance of the services of its assigned special prosec prosecutors for violators of the NIPAS Act. Next, the next one is Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Its interest is advertising QPL as, a, as an ecotourism area focusing the local tourists. Its power is approved and fund the projects implement rules and regulations. Next one is local business owners. Its interest is an, an increase in tourist equates to an opportunity for an increase in sales. Its power is, pro, is to provide extra funds in QPL. Next one is the researchers. Its interest is relatively few studies have been conducted in QPL, hence being a more attractive choice as a location of interest for research studies. Its power is helps po people to understand the intricacy of carrying capacity in tourism, specifically in the QPL. For the interest of community environment and natural resources or CENRO, it would be funded the research to complete the project in QPL, while the interest would be the source of the collected trail data, length and width for the research in the QPL. Next would be the extension officers. <coughs> The interest would be provide knowledge to the local communities on conserving and protecting QPL, while the power would be maintenance of the ties with the communities and people's organization. On the National Commission on Indigenous People, or NCIP, the interest would be interested in the welfare of the existing ethnic groups and indigenous people in the protected area, while the power would be protection of rights of the indigenous and other ethnic groups present in the protected areas. For the, lastly, for the Ecosystems Research and Development Bureau, or ARDB, the interest would be suggested use of three approaches, carrying capacity standards for the evaluation of carrying capacity in the QPL sites, while the interest, I will, the power would be provide adequate information, technologies, and innovations to research for the viability of natural resources. The next stakeholder is Philippine National Foods. Its interest is to ensure the safety and welfare of the public in care protected life. Its powers enforce the law, prevent and control crimes, maintain and for public safety and internal security the active support of community. The next is important of interior local government, the AIHG. Its interest is to provide assist the LGUs for peace and order in area. Its power is to promote peace and order, ensure public safety, and strengthening local government capability aimed towards the effective delivery of basic services to local communities. The next is part of labor and employment. Its interest is for the rights of the laborer in PL. It's in its power to control the labor and and ecotourism and other business located in the protected area. Then the take is government organization or NGOs. Its interest is to help in promoting development of the protected area. The power is to fund opportunities proving the management of QPL. Next is Department of Public Affairs. Highway, CWH. Its interest is to maintain the rules and infrastructures. 
its power is to face more patient the construction of infrastructure in the air. Then is it's in reference to the affected areas to make power to create new laws to determine carrying capacity of Cuba. Next is the Department of Transportation or the DOTR. Um, its in interest is to guide the tourists and provide vehicles in QPL. Uh, the power of it is to share responsibilities with other agencies in controlling movement to and from the QPL. Next is the Department of Budget and Management. Its interest it could allot a budget for the construction of infra infrastructures in QPL. The power is allocate funds to the different stakeholders about the development of UPL. Next is the Department of Budget, Department of Transportation. Uh, the next is the Department of Finance could be of help towards investment and financing practices that support sustainable tourism together with the solid donors who are traditionally attracted by research and education activities, while the power is could develop an incentive program for ecotourism to stimulate local communities in the QPL. Next is the Philippine Tourism Promotion Boards or the PTPB. Interest can assist in the enhancement of visitor experiences and satisfaction in, in QPL by the development of different ecotourism sites, tourism products and services in the QPL. The power is to responsible for marketing and promoting the Philippines domestically and internationally as a major global tourism destination. And next is the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority. Its interest is set aside 5% of travel tax collection for the development of ecotourism sites in provinces with strong tourism potentials. The power is attach agencies of DOT as implementing arm for infrastructure development. The next one is the Office of the President. Its interest is it could support the creation of tourism projects that refers to the growth of tourism in the QPL area that offers economic impact for the people without harming the economy. Its power is it can write executive orders and veto bills that could prove detrimental or favorable for the management of QPL. The next one is the mass media. Its interest is coverage of related, related news about the QPL and its stakeholders. Its power is promotes awareness about the status of the QPL, influence people on the maintenance and protection of the QPL. The next one is the National Commission for Culture and the Arts or NCAA. Its interest is can help with the QPL local people on the tourism-related activities, including the view of the numbers of visitors and their involvement in tourism activities without any effect on lifestyle and culture. Its power is support conservation of the cultural heritage resources based on ecotourism. The next one is the Association of the Tourism Officers of the Philippines or ATOP. Its interest is to strengthen the capabilities of LGU tourism officers for tourism development and enhance services provided to the, to the tourism in the QPL. Its power is fosters unity in the tourism industry and promotes the welfare of the tourism. Next is multilateral and bilateral partners. Its interest is its donor agencies that support ecotourism programs and projects. Its power is main donor agencies who provide either technical assistance or funding or both that bridges the public and private sectors. Yeah. The next is Department of Education. Its interest can provide the knowledge, skills, and experience of the managers and future staff of the PAs that implement the study of carrying capacity. Its power, on the other hand, is it can raise awareness of the need for environmental protection and cultural heritage protection as more PAs in the Philippines in the future will allow for expanded resource use to include recreational and tourism activities. Next is National um, Economic and Development Authority or NEDA. Its interest provide 
the policy and enable the climate for QBL development. Its power is it is a socio-economic planning and policy coordinating organization that is in charge of developing national and regional plans. Next, National Ecotourism Development Council or NEDC. It provide the it provides a policy direction for QPL and its power is the Court Foundation for Developing Policies, Guidelines, Norms, and Regulations. Next, National Ecotourism Steering Committee or NESI, it provides its interest provide approval to the QPL Development Action Plan and its power, the NEDSI's Working Committee, whose responsibilities include reviewing, approving action plans for ecotourism development and approving significant ecotourism projects. Lastly is the Regional Ecotourism Committees. Its interest can provide advice and assistance in the development of QPL and its power to create and implement a national ecotourism plan and program to promote and develop ecotourism in the country. So uh, here we can see the scorings that we did uh, as a group. And next slides. Next slide. Then uh, for the final uh, ranks, and this shows the general ranking of the value of the stakeholders. Uh, the general trend was that those who are involved in the field of management, especially uh, among the government, they uh, hold the most value, like which is likely because of the several layers of the pre-existing laws that have been vested into them. Uh, both, pa uh, both power and interest towards the Quezon uh, protected landscape. The local communities took the next rank as they should since the government ought to serve the people under their jurisdiction. Uh, but this part had posed some questions for us as some would have preferred or expected to see the communities to be uh, among the top rankers. Uh, it was then followed by two management bodies and then by business owners uh, as, it, as fifth in rank. And after that follows uh, another string of government bodies or agencies. Uh, and then the rankings change for the research per personnel followed immediately by the academe and the tourists, mass media, and other related organizations from both government and non-government origins as the last group of stakeholders holding the lowest ranks and computed values for the value cut of the uh, It was surprising for us to see that the academe did not uh, rank better, but this is due to the amount of pre-existing rights of the initial groups, groups towards the Quezon protected landscape compared uh, when you compare it to the groups before it. And now only the only that the Department of Transportation had not managed to reach the value for it to be part of the major stakeholders of the study in the Quezon protected landscape. And that's all. Thank you. Okay, all right. Thank you for both of the groups. You did very well. And now for our activity response number six, let us call on group one. everyone, we are the first group and for activity 6, we examine the media portrayal of the environment and natural resource. And here are the results. For the poster, we choose the same paper, Save the Planet, from WWF. For the people to realize that saving the planet starts with them saving paper. Um, the poster was to convey a message, save paper, save the planet, yet paper towels are provided to illustrate the advocacy. Paper towels are disposable. And it is a primarily solid waste. And next, please. Uh, our next media is the newspaper article entitled Paglilinis ng mga estero mas palalakasin by Filipino star ngayon. It's an article for informing the people of Metro Manila about the projects that MMDA is doing in order to clean the estuaries in the place. The stereotype being enforced is that pe Filipinos want to be resilient and want to be disaster ready when disasters arise in the country, thus cleaning the estuaries, followed by the media. Our chosen movie is Baler, produced by Viva Films and Vida Foundation. 
The movie demonstrated how devoted Spaniards and Filipinos are to their beliefs and principles, and that love is worth fighting for. The stereotype that is present in the movie is when citizens from different countries collaborate and help each other. The next media is a radio program titled Earth Hour Talk Central Luzon from the WRW radio station. This is about spreading awareness and appreciation of the environment and its importance to the people. The stereotype portrayed in this media is that people believe that natural resources are unlimited. For commercial, we chose surf commercial that conveys the message people can have fragrant detergent at affordable price that can lift up their laundry and their senses. People must become wise. There's no need for always buy an expensive one if there is a cheap one that has the same effect as the expensive one. And that is how the environment and natural resources are portrayed in the media. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now let us call for group two for your presentation. All right, good day, everyone. We are group two, and um, we will present our um, our chosen media for examining the media portrayal of the environment and natural resources. Um, the uh, specific media that we chose was uh, the poster of Oikos Helping Hand. Its purpose is for reusable mask making. It is for the public, of course. And uh, the message here is that they are calling for volunteers in, re in uh, making reusable masks. And uh, let us on my group mate for, for the next, for the next uh, topic. Um, for the stereotypes, um, analyzing the picture, uh, we see a sewing machine in the foreground of the picture working on a piece of fabric by a pair of arms. Uh, one of the stereotypes in this poster was the skin of the tailor, since Oikos is a local LGU, and they are expecting the volunteers to be Filipino as well, or at least of Southeast Asian ethnicity in aim to, post, in aim to foster a sense of belo belongingness with the target audience. Next would be the physical characteristics of the arms of the model. Experience is a factor that Oikos is looking for, and an experience in sewing would be visible in the arms of a tailor, as seen from the bulging veins and in the roughness of the fingers of the model. Uh, the last is the absence of the identity or the face of the model. This can be looked at with two perspectives. <clears throat> First, the tailor could be you or us, the target audience of the foster. Second, tailoring is a discrete job, especially when you compare it to how more popular fashion designers are compared to those that make the clothes themselves. Unless, of course, if the fashion designer makes the clothes that he or she himself, herself, had designed. Thank you. So, for this poster, this falls under the category of Media Effect A, a short-term deliberate media effect, which is its characteristic of advertising media, an example of which are commercials, whether it is from radio or from television. So, this print ad of Oikos Helping Hand was not meant to run for several months, but just for a few weeks in an aim to call their volunteers for mask making. That's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you for group number two. And now be ready for group number three. So good afternoon, everyone. We would like to present our findings regarding the analysis of different media. So here in our print ad, building an art to your advocacy activities. People have been accustomed to use it to promote services, as these are being stereotyped by people which people utilize to be more effective in marketing and advertising. In relation to people and environmental interaction, people will easily express their sense to different forms of art. Art can be a good medium to connect people to environmental preventive law advocacy. For the newspaper, this is from Filipino Star Ngayon. The stereotype is the ordinary Filipinos doesn't come from a big family or artist can run to a higher 
official like Senate position. In line with the connection, people tend to vote for the person who has the same advocacy as them. In the music video, one stereotype challenged by Nidma was they did not give consideration to the early adulthood from 20 years old to 30 years old to be an executive. For the people environment interaction, most of the anchor were represented by boys, middle age to adult age, and veteran. Usually, early middle age to late middle adulthood are the listeners because of the influence of the technical information. Um, from the movie, you are you to me are everything. Uh, sa in stereotypes, stereotype city dwellers as the as the ones who would verbally abuse and almost physically assault people in the party who aren't dressed according to the norm. They immediately judge people from other culture, just like from the movie. People live in mountain area have been uber dependent on their natural environment. Um, they have nurtured the land with hard labor not only for their own survival but also for the gen- generations yet to come. From the commercial video of Nescafe, Babangon Tayo, the Taan League Tribe is one of the 110 groups of indigenous people in Bukidnon, Philippines. There was an instance of stereotyping the indigenous people. In reality, not all IT wear those kinds of clothing in Bukidnon. Thank you for that. All right, so now let us proceed for our activity response number seven. Let us call on group number one. Uh, good evening. We are group one for AR7, and these are the pyramids that we have taken. And as we can see, uh, our countries are Japan, Pakistan, China, Vietnam, and the Virgin Islands. Among these five countries, Pakistan is the only one that exhibits an expansive type of population in which both the fertility and mortality rates are high. It means th- that their population does not increase and is composed of many young people. I am to be followed by Jorinel. And the high fertility rate may be explained by the people's lack of access to contraceptives and generally lower levels of education among females. Also, due to poverty, malnutrition, overcrowded living conditions, inadequate sanitation, and contaminated water supplies are rampant in the communities in this country, which, is, which usually causes the high mortality rate. On the other hand, the four remaining countries, namely China, Japan, Vietnam, and Virgin Islands, all exhibit a constricted type of population where there is lower mortality rate while the fertility rate remains constant. These countries have high numbers of middle-aged and elderly people, but few young people. Basically, these countries have an aging population. Japan's birth rate may be falling because there are fewer good opportunities for young people, and especially men, in the country's economy. In a country where men are still widely expected to be breadwinners and support families, a lack of good jobs may be creating a class of men who don't marry and have children, because they and their potential partners know they can't afford. As for China, one reason for their declining fertility rate is that the number of women of childbearing age who were mostly born in 1980s and 1990s fell sharply from their parents' generation as a result of the one-child policy. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. And now let us proceed to group number two. All right, good day, everyone. We are group number two, and this is our uh, five selected countries for population dynamics and resource use. Um, We picked um, the countries of Uzbekistan, Bhutan, um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Latvia, and uh, Congo. And um, of course, in increasing population, especially in the rural and uplands, has been identified as the main culprit in the dwindling natural resources. And this is an uh, exercise we will first-hand experience um, analyzing population pyramids of various countries. Um, so upon analysis of uh, the population pyramid of Uzbekistan and the relationship between the people in the society to the national economy, the population of both males and females reach uh, 1.5 million relative to their GDP, where their industry and services is highly concentrated with the rates of 33.7% uh, and 48.5% respectively. This makes sense because the 
the export for about $11.48 billion and their commodities are natural gas, cotton fibers, copper, and ethylene polymers that require strong manpower and labor. And of course, uh, the analysis of the relationship, the relationship between the people and the society to their environment and natural resources, their RLC is uh, shrinking due to chemicals from their industries and it affected their people. Many cases of respiratory problems and human health disorders arise. And this scenario partially explains why their hospital bed density is four beds over 1,000 of population as of 2014. And uh, let us call on my next group mate for the population pyramid of called the Ivor. Next would be Cote d'Ivoire, which is located in the African, African continent. Um, in terms of its analysis of the relationship between the people and the society dimension to the national economy, uh, Cote d'Ivoire is reliant on agriculture and other activities, which consists of the two-thirds population. This country has been the world's largest producer and exporter of cocoa beans and a compelling producer and exporter of coffee and palm oil, which experienced a boom in the economic development in the year 2011. The Ivorans' labor force for agriculture would be 68%, which is an indication of the continuous growth in the agricultural sector. However, the lack of educational accomplishment contributes to the rates of unskilled labor, which is only 9.4%. In terms of its analysis of the relationship between the people and the society to the environment and natural resources issues in the country, Cote d'Ivoire has been experiencing problems with water pollution or contamination from sewage and industrial factories as well as in the agricultural effluents which releases wastewaters from the piggeries and dairy sheds. As a result, France has been experiencing higher rates of infectious diseases such as waterborne diseases, um, like bacteria, diarrhea, hepatitis A, and typhoid fever. Next would be the vector-borne diseases such as malaria, dengue, fever, and yellow fever. On the other hand, on water contact diseases, we have skeptosomiasis, and for the animal contact diseases, rabies, and for the respiratory diseases, we have meningococcal meningitis. Um, the next country would be Bhutan. Okay, so for Bhutan, it is one of the world's smallest and least developed countries, which is based on agriculture and forestry, which provide the main livelihood for more than 60% of the population. So the hydropower exports to India have boosted Bhutan's um, overall growth, even though GD GDP fell in 2008 as a result of a slowdown in India. Its predominant export market since Bhutan's trade is largely confined to India and the transmission trend um, growth in trade and also the growth of economy via India impact cannot be ruled out. Um, besides, Bhutan's small economy is based largely on uh, um, hydropower, agriculture, and forestry, which provide the main livelihood for more than half of the population because rugged mountains dominate the terrain and the building of roads and other infrastructure difficult and expensive and so Mutan signed a pact in December 2014 to expand duty-free trade with Bangladesh. So the fourth country is the Republic of the Congo. Um, as of July 2020, it has a total population of 5.3 million. In the analysis of the relationship between the people and society dimensions to the national economy, the current administration of the Republic of the Congo faces difficult economic challenges such as promoting recovery <coughs> and reducing poverty. Decreases in oil prices, which began in 2014, have limited government expenditure. Lower oil prices have caused the government to cut more than $1 billion in the project expenditure. Many groups, including physicians, nurses, and teachers, have gone on strike as a result of the government as the result of the government's inability to pay civil workers' salaries. <clears throat> Following a multi-year recession, the nation approaches the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, in 2017 for a new program. The IMF stated that the nation's continuing reliance on oil, unsustainable debt, and severe governance weaknesses are a major obstacle to the nation's economy. In terms of the analysis of the relationship between the people and society, to the environmental and natural resources issue in the country. 
The economy of the Republic of the Congo is a combination of subsistence farming and the industrial sector focus mostly on oil support services and government expenditure. Um, oil has superseded forestry as the foundation of the economy, um, accounting for a sizable portion of government income and exports. Natural gas is increasingly being converted to power rather than clear substantially boosting energy prospects. Now for uh, the last country, the country of Latvia, uh, it has a population of 1.8 million and is situated in Europe. Now, uh, for uh, relationship between the society and its national economy, half of the GDP of Latvia is contributed by its own people. Uh, by being half, uh, this is a normal trend for a country with low population. Another vantage point for its low population is its ability to attract small businesses of relatively long longevity, but uh, due to con- corruption and its low birth rate, foreign investors uh, seem to avoid Latvia. Now, the relationship between the people and uh, its natural resources for Latvia, after gaining independence, uh, Latvians have taken into account that to take better care of their people, they also have to make improvements for the basic needs services. And this translated for them into uh, taking better care of their natural resources and pollu- and combating pollution. Even though pollution still exists, uh, they are making uh, great strides in uh, making these things sustainable. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. And last but not least, um, let us call on group number three. Good day, everyone. We are the group three, and we will be discussing the distributions of age, group, and sex in a population that illustrates in a population pyramid. The pyramid with the greatest fertility rate executed in the population pyramid of the Philippines and Vietnam as a wide-ranging population pyramid compared to the four countries. Ghana population pyramid shows as the age get older, the shapes of the pyramid gets thinner. The relationship of people and society to the environment and natural resources is that it plays a big significant role in supporting the locals through their livelihood exportation, tourism, and such. Even though the environment provides people the economic development, the natural resources of each country are risky. Different environmental issues are arising, such as forest degradation, loss of biodiversity, water pollution, and much more. So this tends to challenge both relations in benefiting one another to provide services and security. Thank you. Thank you for that, for all the groups from one, two, and three. And now for our last AR, our activity response eight. Let us call on group number one for their presentation. Good day, everyone. This is Chris Kwan, and we are presenting the Vendetta Community. The Vendetta Community is a band of speaking people inhabiting the region of the Republic of South Africa, known from 1979 to 1994 as the Republic of Venda. The area is now part of the Popo province of the situated in the extreme northeastern corner of South Africa, bordering southern Zimbabwe. Women, then the women clothing like any other African dance are very colorful and deep. And then the women's clothing, the colorful parts of the upper garment made from multicolored striped cloth called Venda. It is meant of cloth to the strip band as soon as cross the top and two straps with hopo uh, of the same clothes tie over the shoulder. Unlike the other African groups, then the women are not interested in them. They have plain important roles in education and many other high positions. We also have the right to own properties, usually through the inheritance. Um, for Vendamin, uh, a cloth chingi is a vital clothing garment traditionally used by all Vendamins. It is a triangular piece of soft skin enclosing the front, reaching between the legs and tied at the back. 
Cindy was used by a mature men, which are made from the creek stinger or dapper and skin group. Uh, Vendam men also use cloak during cold weather such as Kruka, which is made from a complete skin goat made by young men. Furthermore, the chief traditionally wearing an animal skin, headband, and sila or caros over his shoulders. Those of men have usually difficult parts compared to women, uh, were assigned to the less physically demanding but time consuming ones. Uh, such example would be building the cultures and tests. Vendas believe that the ancestors living with the people, so therefore the clothes are considered to be sacred, representing the ancestors. Thank you so much for group number one, and now let's call on group number two. The Ivatan community. The Ivatan is considered to be highly resilient, especially when they are situated in Batanas, which is considered to be the typhoon belt in the country. They have highly adapted to their environment, considering how they have zero casualties whenever an extreme typhoon makes its way over. The Ivatan are considered to be peace-loving and honest, which can be seen through them having a zero crime rate. The size of their province makes it so that they know each other, giving them a strong social system within the community. These are the Ivatan community. One of the endemic clothing of the Ivatans is the vaku. A vaku is a headgear designed to protect the wearer from sun and rain. It is made from vuyayui palm fiber. Ivatan people wear vaku for women and kanae for men, made in abaka for sun and rain protection. The Ivatan have a close-knit community wherein labor-sharing is the tradition, not just among family members but also among peers. These are different types of cooperative work among the Ivatans. They also have payuahan or exchange laborers. All the members of a household are involved in farming. The women usually take care of the lighter tasks like wedding, while the children help them with farm chores during summer vacation. After work, the Ivatan family members and the friends celebrate by getting together and drinking a local wine called Palak. Our group compared the female and male clothing of Ivatan community. Nina portrayed the male and Daniel portrayed the female. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let us now call on group number three. Good day everyone, this is our presentation about the Dayak tribe. Dayak is a term for natives of the island of Borneo. Dayak tribes are divided into 405 sub-tribes and each of the sub-tribes has custom and culture similar both Dayak in Indonesia as well as in Sabah, Sarawak, and Malaysia. Ethnic Dayak consists of six major ethnic groups and is divided into 405 small tribes. Forests for the Dayak people are the world. The source of life and the position of the role of the forest is what drives the Dayak community to use the forest around them and at the same time foster a commitment to preserve their existence and its survival of the forest itself. One of the ways that they express the respect for the gods that provided the natural resources is through their traditional clothing. The traditional men's clothing is called King Baba. The, in the Dayak language, King means clothes and Baba means men. These garments are made of bark, or wood kapu ang puro plant, both types of wood are kalimantan and denic plants that have high fiber content. And the yakmen are more engaged in government and in politics within the community. Kalimantan barat is the custom clothing for women that is also made of the same material and metal. However, the designs are more connected to women, among others, topless, fabric sub ordinates as well as other bars trinkets such as necklace, beads, and ornaments, hornbill feathers on his head. Some other jewelry of worn include jarret hand bracelet and made of span of tengan plankets to be worn on the hand. The yakmen handle the primary labor for uh, their tribe by hunting, gathering, scouting, forests, and fields that are available for farming. And prior to the institution of palm oil farming, the yakmen and women had a more equal division of labor. Women were expected to weed and maintain Sweden crops like rice, but these tasks have now become more intensive and time-consuming than before, and according to Dayak women. That is all. Thank you for... Okay, thank you so much for group number three. And now let us call for group number four.
Valuing the contribution of women of Ati in natural resources conservation, um, they lived in the mountain areas and are thought to be the earliest inhabitants of the Philippines. Um, certain elderly Ati men and women are highly respected and may have a role as advisors or even mediators, but there's no such thing as a recognized leader. Women were viewed with high regard and deemed as the only ones who can serve as portals to the spirit world. One important role is sustaining the social economic status of their respective family. They are also the ones who share a deep respect for the environment, seeking permission from the gods for all of their activities. To date, in terms of conservation efforts in the Philippines, they have provided the opportunity to be a stakeholder in the preservation of the protected area. Prior to their lands, they had been represented in integrated management plans. Its clothing reflects its simplicity. They wore bark clothes around their heads and bodies as a kind of protection and as a symbol of the passed down custom of wearing it. They also carry a bow and arrow as a representation of their protection against anyone who has bad intentions on their land. Jewelry is made from natural materials such as flowers and animal bones. A Acknowledges now the men alone as high-ranking religious leaders with nuns acting on um, assistance, but never the one who ordains or conducts leadership and worship. The roles of men in Ati tribe, they were traditionally would join um, workers on time of harvest of sugar plants in places in Negros and Bohol. Um, their traditional costumes of men at the tribe were made of dried abaca, piña plants, and loincloth. Just like the rest of um, them, they dress up because it represents how men live in a nomadic existence like subsisting on fishing, jungle hunting, or herb gathering for medicinal purposes. Thank you. Thank you so much for group number four. And now let us all get ready for group number five. Good evening, everyone. I'm here to present AR8, which is Women and Environment and Natural Resources. Coronado Payumo, Bruh. We choose Kalanguya tribe. Kalanguya tribe is a part of indigenous people that can be found in the northern Luzon mountain region. As some researchers say, they were closely related to the Ifugao, hence, they still differ in culture, beliefs, and practices. This tribe has been practicing equality in gender rules. Women can do what men can do, even in traditional times. Kalanguya tribe has a unique role towards men and women in their tribe. From their traditional rules, both men and women have been equal treated. As seen in the picture, this is Kalanguya clothing women wearing a turn dress and a man wear bahag. You can see the man holding a gong or what they call gangha. They use it in blessing rituals, celebrations, like padit, by yog, and kiyad, and it is accompanied by dance. Various instruments are by the Kalanguya tribe for different purposes in their practices. Some are used for offering thanksgiving rituals and gatherings. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this night and thank you for all your hard work and participation. And uh, take care and have a great night ahead. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and ring the notification button. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!